We have, on many occasions, covered the many astonishing ancient rock-cut structures which can be found virtually all over the world. Megalithic creations, often carved from a single piece of stone or dry built, constructed out of impossibly huge stones, and recently, we have touched upon the more impressive stone sites to be found, such as the horseshoe-shaped piece of granite, decided upon by someone or something as the base rock for what many perceive to be the most impressive artistic wonder on Earth. A structure named after a mountain, we also suspect, has witnessed extreme excavation work in the past, as did the Giza Plateau. Indeed, although little known, acres of solid natural stone were excavated from the Giza Plateau as the foundation bed for the most incredibly elaborate pyramid found anywhere. Who could have accomplished such gargantuan tasks over 3,000 years ago? But I digress. Our topic of this video is a wonderful gem hidden upon our Earth. In fact, the largest and seemingly most impressive of them all. So impressive, in fact, a number of individuals, specialists, tasked with the investigation of this astonishing structure and the construction thereof. Some for over 12 years of extensive investigation have been resigned to the conclusion alien influences could have only been responsible for the completion of the structure at such an ancient time in our history. Known as the Lost City of Angkor, this due to its extended duration hidden beneath several thousand highly established tree roots. It was once the capital city of the Khmer Empire, which flourished from approximately the 9th to 15th centuries. However, a similar theory can be applied regarding the Khmer Empire's success to the ancient Egyptian civilization's notorious longevity. It is, of course, a possibility that we have covered regarding Giza before, that these ancient cultures partook in probably the earliest form of graffiti, presumably ordered by the current rulers, to add their own deity depictions to these already ancient and astonishing structures. It would be a logical decision for a successful leader of an ancient group of people, namely self-declared Hindu monarch Jayavarman II, who also declared himself a universal monarch and a god-king, to make the decision to claim such mastery as their own creation. When visitors entered the area, they would immediately assume that your group had constructed this awe-inspiring temple, undoubtedly intimidating and additionally giving incredible security to your people, as the temple even possessed an impressive moat, an instant advantage over all surrounding tribes. Not hewn from a single rock, but created using no less impressive techniques, undoubtedly requiring the same perfection in artistic ability as Kailash Temple. Five million blank stone blocks were perfectly laid upon one another, slowly forming a template. These stones were then individually and perfectly carved into the astonishing wonder we see before us today. As the blocks were pre-laid, this means whoever the sculptors were had only one chance to get the carvings right, a feat they seemingly accomplished. Who built the lost city of Angkor? Kailash? The pyramids? Baalbek, etc., etc.? The list of utterly perplexing sites grows every day, but thankfully, so does our knowledge. How did a lost global civilization once cut solid stone with such ease and precision? Unimaginably large megalithic structures, laser-like cut stones utilized within the baffling, polygonal masonry, not to mention the mystery surrounding the construction of the Great Pyramids. Many mysterious drilled stone cores can be found throughout Giza. These enigmatic tool marks can also be found at the incredibly ancient dolmen of Valkonsky in Russia, exposing the capabilities and clear technological prowess that this lost civilization, who we feel were possibly experiencing an ice age, had left in order to survive its fallout. Yet I digress.
Discovered within Austria, we were initially presented with just these three images, two of the exterior, which, if one looks closely, not only displays the porthole of a hidden chamber hidden upon the side of a solid rock face, but that the surrounding rocks had also been cut and finished to an incredibly high standard somewhere in the very distant past. This indicated to us that this chamber that is not only reminiscent of the Hypogeum in Malta with the addition of the stone within the circular chamber, which we cannot avoid feeling, could have some form of connection to resonance creation, with erosion indicative of a site with an age similar to Cappadocia's ruins, but later revealed to have been, as we expected, but one chamber, in a maze akin to that of the underground city of Derinkuyu. Hidden within an Austrian book of antiquities, we discover a series of fortunately mapped solid stone-cut chambers which litter this enormous chunk of exposed bedrock. Clearly an astonishing prehistoric site, one cut by an incredibly capably, and we feel, clearly technologically advanced civilization. For why would a civilization with simple, primitive tools, such as those made of blunt or brittle stones, or soft, malleable metals, such as that of copper, go to such extremes in the creation of a maze of hidden chambers, each not only finished to an incredibly precise degree, but to have worked stones into unnatural shapes outside of these chambers, many serving no essential function as far as we can identify? Who created this prehistoric site found within the landscape of Austria? How old are the chambers? What technology or tools were utilized in the creation of such a magnificent ancient ruin? Or indeed, that of the Volkonsky Dolmen, along with the many similarly drilled cores and their stone blocks found throughout Giza? Do all these pieces of evidence indicate the past existence of a lost civilization, one who possessed advanced stone-cutting technology? We find such possibilities highly compelling. If one were to mention the incredible feats of engineering undertaken by our now lost ancient ancestors, in particular, gigantic walls, some may lean towards the impressive, sheer enormity of the megalithic stones within the wall of Gornaya Shoria, or more commonly, the Great Wall of China is the more popular choice, or the more obscure, lesser-known Great Wall of India. Undoubtedly, the Great Wall of China was a feat of monstrous proportions. Having been built to such a scale, it's visible from space. Yet what many more are unaware of is an ancient kingdom once located in southwestern Nigeria. Known as the Walls of Benin, they dwarf the Walls of China, a series of defensively constructed earthworks called Aya in Edo. They consist of 9.3 miles of intercity walls, and an estimated 9,900 miles of outer wall. The walls of Benin City were described as, quote, the world's largest earthwork carried out prior to the mechanical era, end quote, by the Guinness Book of Records. The Benin City walls have been known of by Westerners since around the 1500s. Portuguese explorer Duarte Pacheco Pereira briefly described the walls during his travels. Another description was given around 1600 by the Dutch explorer Dirk Reiters. Reiters' account of the walls is as follows, quote, At the gate where I entered on horseback, I saw very high, very thick walls of earth with a very deep broad ditch around. They were dry and full of high trees. Who built these walls? Or indeed, how did they accomplish such a mind-boggling feat? Traditional accounts suggested that assuming a 10-hour workday with a labor force of some 5,000 men, it could have been completed within just 97 days. However, these estimates have been criticized over the years in many ways, one in particular being a lack of account for the time it would have taken to extract earth from ever-deepening holes. Yet, regardless of these discrepancies in opinion, regarding the challenge in its creation, or indeed their age or origin. We find these walls highly compelling.